Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Translating Love. And of <laughs> course, it's me, Wolfgang or Wifi. And Danny or Robert. Robert. Robert Danielle Alicia Steiner. No, Robert is my chin hair. Bob. Um, we're back with a new episode and we're excited because this one is kind of cool. Is it? It's a cool topic, I think. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a little bit, um, it goes a little bit in one hand with uh, the the long distance relationship podcast mm-hmm. episode we did. So if not, if you haven't heard it, you should. If you're interested in that topic, you probably will also be interested in long distance relationship. But before we start, let's uh, just quickly thank everyone. So, I mean, yeah, thank you, everyone who's listening, everyone who is here for the first time or is new here, everyone who's been listening since the beginning, everyone yeah. who has subscribed. Yeah, if you haven't subscribed, but you're still listening, subscribe, please. I've looked into our uh, statistics. statistics and it said that 30% of our listeners are subscribed and 70% Actually, over no, 70. it was like 81% or something. Nah, it was 73. Oh. So over 70% of you are not subscribed. So please consider, even if you just like some episodes or you pick certain episodes mm-hmm. because of the topics, but it would still help us a lot. And also, uh, if you can rate them on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, we would really appreciate that. But mostly, uh, yeah, sharing the podcast, just like sharing a link to your Instagram story or on Facebook or whatever mm-hmm. is is tremendous if you can do that. So yeah, let's go into the podcast episode. And as you already uh, figured out by the title of the episode, <laughs> you know the topic already, so we can't really make a secret out of it. Nope. But um, the topic is basically moving, moving or relocating to be with somebody. So yeah, they, basically. Essentially, your long distance relationship, the long distance part gets to finally end and you get to be together, but it usually means one person having to move. Right. So basically, you relocate for love Mm -hmm. or great great sex if there's no love. (laughs) Or money. That can also be a factor. Sure. (laughs) (laughs) No, for love, obviously. Um, And I mean... It's a little, it's a tricky episode or a tricky subject overall because you have been ob- most likely in a long distance relationship up to this point, mm-hmm. or you still are, or you have been. Um, and and yeah, as we talked in the long distance relationship podcast episode, we, uh, yeah, it's a tedious thing to do. It's it's working, um, but if there are time zones. Uh, involved in the whole thing Mm -hmm. especially like uh more than a couple of hours so like seven eight nine ten hours uh the the whole thing can be really tricky and uh yeah hard i think it's tricky no matter what even if you have yeah obviously yeah like no time difference between each other it's still tricky but especially if there's like a long distance and like physical distance where you can't just drive an hour or two hours to go see that person. Yeah. It's either you have to fly or if you're in a bigger country, like in the U.S., for example. Train it, it or It could car. be like 30 mm. hours or something that you have to drive to yeah. get to somebody. And, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the part of basically figuring out what to do, how to do to live a life together is not easy. Nope. Um, and there are so many factors to it and so many things to weigh and uh, and I think overall there's no right decision the wrong decision in my opinion is to let something that works and that is a good mm-hmm. to just say okay I don't want to out of comfort or out of fear yeah. maybe also let it just like okay let's just end it because it's not working or it's too hard well I mean something that that my dad and I talked about when I was first talking about moving to Austria was, and this is what stuck with me. He basically said, think about if you would regret it if you didn't do it. Mm-hmm. So he said, you should you should only do it or you should only not do it if you know that you won't regret not doing it. Mm-hmm. But 
the thing is you can't know that unless you do no, it. You no. can't say, I'm not going to regret not doing this. Yeah. And so for me, that was my like, I had already basically decided to go, but I was still scared. It's a scary thing. And that was kind of my my push to be like, okay, it's scary, but that's a mm, good thing. Mm -hmm. And I would severely regret it and have all these what if questions yeah, yeah. if I hadn't have done it. I mean, that's an interesting point that you make because uh, being scared of something like that is a good thing because that shows you already that uh, there is something uh, that can be really exciting. Mm -hmm. And there's this quote that I really like, uh, which uh, is, I think, life begins uh, outside of your comfort zone. At the end of your comfort oh, at the, zone. At the end mm -hmm. of your comfort zone, which uh, basically sums it up. If you are always living by comfort and by like, I can't do that because, or I don't want to do that because, or I won't, I want, uh, I don't want to fail on or that, what or what if it doesn't out. work out, um, stuff like that, you never really, I think, live up to your full potential. And also failing and like, I mean, uh, moving across the country, moving across states, moving across uh, uh, even, continents. Even leaving just your hometown that hometown. you've never left before. Right, you, you never know if it works out. And, and sure, the bigger the step is, the more scary it seems, mm -hmm. especially if there is a different language involved and time zones and stuff like that, moving away from your parents. But in the end, it's 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 a move, and it's the same thing as if you just move out of your town. I'm not like, but it's a move. I mean, it's it's nothing else. Well, the thing is, you can always go back, right? And so, right. there, I think there are very few situations where you can't go back. Yeah, sure. Obviously, there are some crazy exceptions to that, but for the most part, if you try something, yeah. Don't go into it saying, what if it doesn't work out? Because if it doesn't, then you figure out the next thing when right. that, if that happens. But and, yeah, you and just go in with the attitude that you want it to work yeah. and you're going to do what you can to make it work. And that's all part of the relationship anyways, yeah. putting in the work to make it work. Yeah. And if you already have the feeling that there's something special or you both have the feeling that it's worth to try it, mm -hmm. then why not try it? Um, because in the end, if it, if it doesn't work out, then you are at least a dozen or more uh, experiences richer. Um, and if it works out, I mean, that's 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 awesome for mm -hmm. you. So, so basically, what happened in our situation was that I was at like at the brinks of deciding what to do if I am going to study uh, my master, or going to mm -hmm. do my masters, um, or what to do, and so. Um, and you were also like a little bit in between. So basically a move was coming up in the future. Well, basically, I mean, as those of you who have listened longer know, yeah. I was in the middle of going through a divorce. Yeah. And once that was finalized, I mean, we weren't going to live together and... The, you know, our my, my lease was running out of my apartment. Mm -hmm. And so I had to make a decision anyways. Yeah. It was either I'm going to stay in this town where I don't really know that many people because I had already moved away from, pretty far away from home. Yeah. Or do I move back to where I'm from in Milwaukee? Mm -hmm. Or do I move to Austria? So it was kind of like a, yeah. for me, it was, I needed to go somewhere. Yeah. And so it was also a little, okay, we had, we didn't have that much time. We didn't have nope. like a few months or weeks actually to really figure out because yeah. because yeah it was weeks basically um and we had that time well, was a, i mean it was a little more because you i came to visit you in november or october to november no sure but, and but, but that's when we kind of decided okay this needs something else needs to happen yeah yeah but the but final even during decision, that time yeah. in november we were talking about what you wanted to do yeah, and yeah. what was possible yeah, and yeah but, but basically from end of november to january it was decided yeah yeah so we had a couple of weeks to really figure out how and uh, how the whole thing could turn out and what we need in terms of visa and legal stuff and papers. and Which was a pain um, in the ass. And that's like a thing if you are thinking about that, if you are uh, playing with the thought to move mm -hmm. or if your Especially lover, loved out of one the country. moves. Right. You should really talk to someone who did that before you. So either just... Uh, I don't know. There are forums out there uh, with people. I mean, you Facebook can reach out maybe. to me too. Reach out to people. 
who have been through a similar process and also just Google and and read as much as possible on official governmental websites. Well, and, and make phone calls because yeah. even when I was making phone calls, I would read something on a government website and yeah. then I would yeah. call somebody and they would tell me something yeah. completely different. So, so we, even the people yeah. who work in the offices don't always yeah. know what's right. the right it's, thing. The, the problem is it's so different in every country mm -hmm. and there's so many regulations and so many rules and so many laws um, some countries it's super easy yeah. and some countries it's really, really strict. Yeah. And so, yeah, we ended up running around a lot. You had to go back at uh, once more yeah, to I get mean, the visa at the embassy Basically, I was York. told that I could get the visa once I came to Austria. Mm -hmm. Like you can get it within Austria. Yeah. And... They didn't really explain to me that there were different kinds of visas. Like yeah. there's one if you study, there's yeah. one if you do this, there's one if you do that. And we weren't getting married right away. <laughs> so yeah. Also, we, we weren't really sure. We were trying the study visa first because mm -hmm. we thought, okay, that would be kind of the, the, the easier one. Mm -hmm. And it would have been for some, for multiple reasons. But at the same time, the the... The school system is different in America, so in Austria, and yeah. so there were a lot of things. There that were a lot of things that didn't transfer over. Didn't in terms transfer of over, right? Um, and so it was it's too pain. too complicated overall, and so we ended up with the uh, au pair visa. And for that, mm -hmm. you had to go back and to apply yeah. in the U.S. for that visa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, it was a tedious process. It was, but. <clears throat> but just going back a little bit to coming to right, right. how we decided um, for me to come here. Because, yeah, yeah. there, I mean, there's so many factors on both sides. Yeah. It was either, I mean, the nice thing about if he would have come to the U.S., you have a house here with your mom, so your stuff could have stayed here. You wouldn't have to get rid of yeah. a bunch of stuff. Things like that yeah. would have been easier for yeah. him. Yeah. Um, and then obviously leaving family is not the easy thing. But I mean, the visa would have been hard for me too. The visa would have been hard, or the if green I card. If I would have not found a company mm -hmm. right away who took care of that, yeah, yeah the that green card would have been hard. So that mm -hmm. was also a factor. Yeah. Um, on my side of it, I was more. I was literally in between jobs, so I was like, okay, technically, I don't have a job tying me down mm -hmm. right now to where I am. My lease was running up in my apartment. I had to move anyways because <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to stay there, and. The only, I mean, so that's kind of how we decided. And when I, when I thought about, okay, this is a relationship. We want this to work and we want the least amount of sacrifice possible. There's going to be sacrifice. Yeah. We want the least yeah. amount possible. Yeah. And for me, it was too important that, I mean, he, he wanted to get his master's degree and I don't want to be the reason that he didn't get it. And like, it's exactly the same thing my dad said mm. to me. If you didn't do it, would you regret it? And I, I heard that in my it, head. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And I heard it in my head and I was like, I can't ask him to not do that mm. for me. And I can't even let him think about that. If it's something he wants to do, then he needs to do it. And I make the sacrifice and I move. Mm. And that's just, that was the, that was the simple decision for me, which yeah. isn't a simple decision. But if you care about somebody, it, this is something that would have affected your entire future. So, mm. I mean, the thing is, I think you, as I said, there is no wrong decision. Mm. Um, and in the end, it's it's uh, it was the more comfortable decision for me mm. in the sense that I didn't really have to do that much, besides all the stuff with the visa and helping language, uh, trying to find jobs and mm -hmm. stuff like that, like the obvious reasons, and also trying to make it her like make it for her comfortable here mm -hmm. and and introducing everything and like i mean laws are different everything's different in a, like in a different country so mm -hmm. but but overall it was a more comfortable decision for me um and sometimes obviously i feel like okay i'm i owe you something mm -hmm. which i mean which is a weird feeling but but sometimes i just feel like okay I, I, you did that big of a step for us for this relationship, so therefore I I kind of owe you something, um, which is true in the sense that you did more or more or less. It's such a know. hard it's such a hard thing because there are times when I mean I don't think that I everything evens out in a relationship. There should never be mm. you did this, therefore I have to do this. Like it's not a 
everything's give and take, but yeah. not as a, I'm going to write this down and we're going to keep track. Like, that's oh, not I how do. it should be. <laughs> I keep I have a book. I, <laughs> I keep track. I have books upstairs for the, for every year oh, there's one book. I see. I'm in the lead right now. So mm -hmm. you owe me a coffee. Uh -huh. But at the same time, it's like, sure, I moved here. And that was that was the bigger sacrifice. Yeah. I I had to come here with basically nothing. I had to give away so much stuff. I literally mm -hmm. came here my entire life packed into two suitcases. I mean, I think the the sure stuff. I mean, there were some stuff you still say, oh, I wish I kept that. Yeah, or I wish there's I... a lot of things that I think But about. overall, I think the the biggest thing for you is still being not look close with your parents not well seeing and your that's parents that that's often. the thing that continues to affect yeah. me and yeah. and i think what's what's really challenging in my side of it still sometimes mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not very frequent but still i it's hard to keep it from becoming resentment because it's not like i i'm angry with him mm. or that i blame him for anything because it was my choice to come here but I think about our future and I think because we talk about when we have kids, mm. we want to stay here. And that's something that's becoming more serious. And it's it's looking very much more like we're not going back there right, at all. Right. It's, it's And for me, that's like, OK, to just the thought alone of I'm never going to live close to my parents again. And my parents are the people I'm closest with next to you i mean we have to say we're working on that to get we're working on it we're trying <laughs> but but that's but the whole to have that's such thing, a close yeah. bond with yeah. your parents which a lot of people can't say that they have mm. but to have that relationship and to mm. know that you're not going to be that close to them again that's yep. it's extremely hard yep. to think about but also to not feel like resentful for it. and and maybe that's the wrong way to phrase it but that, yeah. I think that's 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 a big part that has to be addressed at some point that 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 has to be talked about and that's also that's something that continues to be a problem if you don't have uh, parents or mm -hmm. family in the country you were living in then okay you were already going through that thing but if you're moving away from your family friends uh, then that's something that keeps continuing to be mm -hmm. a problem and if you are that far away that it's not just uh, a, a short drive then that's something that should be uh, uh, considered in the mm -hmm. whole thing not that it should be a factor because sure family and stuff is fine but it's your life and um, but on the other side if it is a factor for you then that needs to be talked about in the relationship sure 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 i mean I, i'm not saying that your uh, your family doesn't matter in that sense no, should, no, should they, they do know they, they totally do but but in the decision Overall, it's your life, mm -hmm. and you should weigh. Okay, is it is is it worth it for me to leave them back, to to change the relationship mm -hmm. in a way where it's not as you well. Know, and close? in some senses, I mean, with technology these days, we can Skype. We mm -hmm. can. I mean, I text my parents every single day. Mm -hmm. There's been very few days since I've moved here in the yeah. three and a half years that I've been here that we haven't texted at least yeah. once a day. I mean, that's the nice thing, sure. But I mean, sure, it's not at all the same as mm -hmm. like getting to physically see them and hug them and, yeah. and have yeah. a conversation like that. But it's something. And yeah. it, it still brings you that sense of, okay, we're still close. And mm -hmm. for me, it's more when I think about us having kids. I, I want my kids to be close with my parents and not just the family here. Yeah. Because I didn't really have that as a kid. And I wish that I did. I mm -hmm. was closer with my mom's side than my dad's side because we just lived closer yeah, to them. I mean, that's 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 normal kind of, I think. Yeah. But you have this good the good family side and the bad yeah, family side. Yeah, but not in terms of like the direct grandparents. Yeah, no, no, I get that. And yeah. that that's hard for me because no, I, I had that. that. That's what I'm saying. I had that with my grandmother on yeah. my dad's side. We never were that close because... Mm -hmm. We lived so far away. Mm. I mean, I I'm not super close with my grandparents, mm. and we live pretty close. So, but yeah, let's take a quick break here. Let's take a break. And we're back. We're back. So yeah, I to mean, oh, sorry. I no, to, it's fine. Sorry. <laughs> you talk. <laughs> You talk. <laughs> Go ahead. So to pick up kind of where we left off, um, just with the to avoid, I think the best thing to avoid feeling resentful because I think it's normal to feel that way when you're on my side of it. I think I'm it's sure normal, it but but there's a fine line between 
being like, I wish that this could maybe happen in the future mm. versus I don't like this person mm. because they, I, I'm blaming them for this situation. Yeah. And I think what's important is that the other person in the relationship that your partner is is aware because for for you for example not that much changed mm. i mean sure i moved in here that was new for you yeah and the language stuff was new but in terms of your life not that much not changed not that much changed no you didn't have to give up that much besides you, i don't see andy as much anymore but that's not my fault <laughs> i don't know it's not my fault so you I maybe lose my train of thought when you do that sorry <laughs> Not that much changed for me. Yeah. So, but so you didn't have like this crazy life yeah. change. Yeah. And I think that in your situation, it's easy to forget how hard it is for yeah, the other person definitely. because of that, because not much changed for you. Definitely. And that's something you should keep in mind. That's something that needs to really be and uh, um, like a goal that you or something that you actively try to think about. I, I'm I'm getting better at that. I was not. No, I'm not. When I say you, I don't mean you specifically. No, I know, you but, are good at it. But I'm, I'm, I was bad. I was worse at it. Mm. But I'm, I'm getting better at it. And I'm trying to be more appreciative of the fact of that. And also being more aware, more aware of how she f might feel mm -hmm. sometimes. Or doing some days because of exactly that reason. Yeah. And especially right now with everything that's yeah. happening in the U.S., that's also a big factor. I mean, the U.S. is like on fire basically with the protests and with COVID. And, and that's also hard to see your country from like... like From uh, the outside. From the outside. And, and you, you can't participate in the way where you want to maybe. Yeah. Um, but I also have to say I sometimes think about okay what if i would have gone to the us where would we be right now mm. and i have to say i i'm glad that we are not in the us right now uh just because of everything that's going on there and how the Although government I, is I handling i can say that i think by this point we mm. would be here again like had we been in the us at first i think we would have been here oh you think by so now. i think so mm. because just with everything with with Trump and all of the yeah. politics and stuff, I wouldn't have wanted to stay. It's it's um, crazy. The thing is, sometimes I I, 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 I feel like I, it would be so cool to just go to the US and stay there for a couple of years and mm -hmm. see what, like, in my job, in my field, I could potentially do a lot there. And it's still a possibility in our future. It no, sure, mean it can't sure, happen. sure. But, uh, yeah, I'm... But I'm, I'm I'm completely grateful and thankful for what you did in order to work, make this work. And therefore, I'm going to give you a little compliment now. <laughs> when I was driving early with my dad mm -hmm. and I saw you walking there, I didn't notice it was you and I was totally I checking you so. out. I was like, who is that pretty lady walking there? And then you smiled at me. I was like, God damn it. And then I was like, oh, it's Danielle. It's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> See... <laughs> There's two things when you say things like that because you've said something like that before where you were driving and you saw me from behind and yeah. you didn't know it was me, yeah, yeah. but you were checking out my ass. Yeah. And so there's two things that come to my mind. The first one is it's a nice compliment because you are attracted to me. But the second thing is like a negative where it's like, you didn't know it was me. So this is just some random person to you that you're checking out on the street. No, I think what and really it happened. it makes me wonder how no, 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 often no. do you check out people you know, on the street? I'm mostly man though. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but what really happened is my unconsciousness saw your aura and was like, hey, that's Danielle. And since it uh -huh. was my subconscious, so I wasn't really, I, I, did, I wasn't aware of it yet mm -hmm. actively. In my conscience, mm -hmm. and so it took a little longer. But you should be, like, that's a good compliment. I mean, it is. Yeah. Yeah, so when we basically drove back, I was like, God damn it, my wife is sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but back to the topic, sorry. Um, no, I just, I think it's important that, that you're, as the other person who didn't have to move or who didn't have to give up a whole lot, yeah. that you're aware of that. And that doesn't mean you have to constantly thank them even years later, like, thank you for moving here, because that's ridiculous. You made me write cards every second day. <laughs> write me a thank you card. <laughs> no, but but to show your appreciation in other ways and, and to make it important to yeah. you yeah. that they're far away from their family and that it might affect yeah. them. Yeah. And 
for example, you've done that a couple times where you have set, like, you know when I'm home. Mm. And so you have set up secretly mm. with my mom or something that she calls me yeah. at some point when I'm yeah. home. So I'm not expecting it, but all of a sudden mm. my mom calls. Or there was one time where you started Skyping with her and you brought your computer mm. in the room and my mom's just there. And mm. it's it's a really... It's a really sweet think, gesture, and it, it it shows to me that you care that I'm so far away, and that yeah. it's hard for me. I think there's just some ways you can deal with the whole situation. It also depends on your parents or or your partner's parents, mm-hmm. obviously, or his family. I mean, you can do it with friends too. It doesn't sure. have to be family if you sure. don't have as close of a relationship. Doesn't but... matter, but I think there are some ways you can do it. And also here, like if they are relocating to a new country where they don't speak the language, there are a lot of ways you can help them mm-hmm. to just uh, also integrating them in your friend circle. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot them of around. patience with them. Patience. In terms of like, it's for yeah. me, at least in the beginning, it was really hard to just be alone at home yeah sure because i already felt so lonely and isolated and so then to be away from you and i think we talked about that too in another episode we did where i mean that's a that's a, it was kind of hard for you at first because i i was so right. like attached that's a thing too that that's something i mean sure you tag along a lot and that's something that just needs to happen in order to be more integrated mm-hmm. in your life and to meet friends and stuff like that so you can't just say oh, i'm not tagging i'm not letting you go with me tonight or something Mm -hmm. like that sure sometimes it's good to make like room for each other and say okay i'm doing something tonight and you're doing something tonight but that that's also something that's going to change if a person moves some somewhere because Mm -hmm. They don't know anyone there. They don't. They are basically strangers to everyone. So, and especially your, if it's a different language, because right, it makes it right. that much harder to just say, right. "Oh, I'm just going to go out and explore. Maybe I I'll mean, meet somebody." Yeah, that's the. That's the. Yeah, that's obvious. If if it's not a sec- if it's not a different language, then mm-hmm. you have it's a little easier. Though. You have probably a much easier time to to find new friends to get to know people on your own. Mm-hmm. But if you don't talk that language very well yet, or you are still learning, then yeah it's It's hard hard. so that's also something that you have to keep in mind and also with your friends that they are like i mean they're your friends so i I assume that they're already nice to that person and trying to integrate Mm -hmm. her but that's also something talking in her language or making it more easier Mm -hmm. for her to understand her or him or whatever or them them yeah but overall it's yeah it's not it's not an easy thing to do and I congratulate you if you did that. And I, I also, it's a, it's a cool, awesome thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it doesn't work out, I think it's a cool story. And if it, it makes you grow a lot, you learn yeah. a lot. You maybe stay even in the country mm-hmm. or somewhere near the country. Um, and things open up. I think. I mean, that's well, my. You see how big the world is right, when you do things right. like that, and your perspective changes. Like right. my perspective changed so much yeah. in terms. I mean, I already had a really open mind about things, but just in terms of experiencing just how massive this world is, mm-hmm. yeah. and different cultures and all of that, it's a really beautiful thing to experience. Yeah, and I think. I don't, that's just my opinion and my way of living. <laughs> I have never had a plan in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like uh, taking the wave at, as it comes and and staying on it as long as possible. And every time in my life there was a second wave, I jumped from one wave to the other and I was never floating around not knowing what to do. I trusted in the universe, mm-hmm. as I say. I trusted in it and something came along. That's how and, I was too. And I, sometimes it's just feeling, if it feels good to you, it, if it makes you feel good, mm-hmm. then that might be the right thing, even though it might be scary, even though it might seem like a big thing. But if it makes you feel good, mm-hmm. if it does, it, if it and feels that, good. that kind of scary is good. Right. I mean, I I was terrified. The the morning I was, I remember vividly what the airport looked like in Portland, mm. where I was like exactly where I was sitting vividly. Mm. And I'm sitting there as soon as I got through security, you know, you have that stress of getting through security and then you have to, mm. you know, do all this stuff. But once you're in and you're waiting, that's you can kind of chill. Yeah. And I'm sitting there waiting. I finally sat down 
And I like felt like I couldn't breathe. It just dawned on me what I was doing. It dawned on me, I am I am leaving the US For right now. For this Austrian motherfucker. No, it wasn't about you. It was looks just like a- my life is completely changing in this moment. Mm-hmm. And I had to go to the bathroom and I just cried. I just bawled for like 10 minutes. And then it was out of my system and I got on the plane and I was fine. But it's but it's such a good scary mm. because you're putting so much faith in yourself. You're putting so much faith in another person, mm. in a new relationship and your and trust. Yeah. And to throw all of that at I just think that's a really powerful thing and it's it a is. wonderful, horrifying feeling. It is. And it's with everything, as 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 we said, stepping out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. is necessary sometimes. I'm not saying that you should jump from every uh, building or whatever <laughs> but but doing something some stuff that makes you feel scared or that mm-hmm. like you feel like ah, i don't know if i can do it that's good I think do it especially like for people our age doing things alone is mm-hmm. so difficult yeah and i felt that way too just i remember the first movie i went to alone mm. was in 2016 yeah that's insane i mean mine too 2016 or and it was it yeah. was like one of the best things and then i started going to movies alone all the time that was nice that's nice yeah that's just one of those things just do those things for yourself mm. have a date with yourself travel alone travel heck. alone what heck 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 travel alone there's no the, no but seriously i my my best holiday was when i traveled alone mm-hmm. that was as so freeing sure there's this one point we're sitting alone somewhere and it might feel a little daunting, like you're in this big city or whatever, completely alone, surrounded by strangers. But at the same time, oh, it was the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. It's good to be out of your comfort zone because right. you learn so much about yourself. I should travel alone. I'm going to book a flight. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no. Yeah. I think we're pretty much done. Is there something you want to add? I mean, I just want to say that... Um, you you said a lot about how how I made like the bigger sacrifice, and in that sense, that might be true. But in terms of our, I mean, you also made a massive sacrifice that I'm extremely grateful for, which was letting me come into your home. This is the beginning of our relationship, mm-hmm. and you're like, move in, <laughs> yeah. and that's not nothing. That's massive, especially you had never lived with somebody before that you were dating. It's true, and we put- and so to do that with mm-hmm. somebody who. You, we, I mean, we knew each other really well, I think, in terms of like who we are as people. Yeah. But no. having spent, we we spent a month total together. Mm. No, I don't, don't think we knew each thing. other that well. I think we got to know each other in the first half sure, year. Sure, but year. I still think compared to a lot of people, our, we got to know each other quickly yeah. in a in a pretty short amount of time. Yeah. And. So that's also, that wasn't nothing. That's also a massive sacrifice to give up your own space. Mm. And and your life also changed a little bit. You had somebody with you all the time. And yeah. you Maybe had that's to. That's why Andy doesn't want to hang out you, anymore. <laughs> you had to help me a lot with language stuff at the beginning mm. and with trying to figure out what am I going to do here? How am I mm. going to get a visa? Is this even going to work? It was really stressful until we figured that out. Yeah, sure. And so that's that's also not nothing. And while I was working and making next to nothing at the job I was doing, you also have supported us financially for so long. Mm. That's also not nothing. That's true. So basically, I'm winning in this oh thing. <laughs> and trying to compliment you <laughs> no, I, and say I appreciate that your that that sacrifice you that. is and just as big. I appreciate it. it. Not that it matters. The size doesn't no, matter. No. But it, I appreciate it. Thank you. It's... It's also a massive sacrifice that you've made. I appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome. But yeah, so, that's yeah. the whole that's the whole thing. That's it, it. Someone's going to have to move. Someone's going in that sense. Someone's yeah. going to have to do it. And that's just how it is. The but takeaway is do it. Do it and try it. Try try to do it in the way that makes the most sense logically. Yeah. You have to think forward, yeah. which is hard, but because you don't it's the kind of the beginning of of your relationship in the sense that you're finally together yeah. in person. And so it's hard to think so far ahead in the future. Just, but you kind of have to a yeah. little because you yeah. want to, you want it, if you want it to work, you have to pick the solution that makes the most sense. Yeah. So in short, do it and be prepared. Mm-hmm. Just prepare yourself. That's it.
Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you for listening for, and for the record, we're glad that we did it. So yeah, we did, we are, but yeah, thank you for listening for hopefully sharing. If you like this episode for liking this ep- or for giving this episode a, uh, like a good review. I mean, you can just the podcast please subscribe, subscribe. We would really appreciate it. And, and, you know, maybe we'll just do this thing. Like if you subscribe, then we'll give you like a little shout out if you, somehow reach out to us that you've subscribed yeah, or we can do that. like show us somehow that you've subscribed by sending us a message on Instagram or email, yeah, email or whatever. whatever yeah. And also and if we'll you, you want to like help us out a little bit, you can do that now on anchor.fm slash translating dash love. You can like support us monthly or just one month or just one time payment, whatever. Mm-hmm. If you like what we do, and they have really small increments too, like yeah. 99 cents a month yeah. or something yeah. is one. So it's not super um, much. Yeah. And we said that the last time and we're, we're not doing this for the money. No. And exactly because of that is why I say this. If you are willing to subscribe to us in that sense, like a financial monthly thing, please also consider to use that money instead for one of the other amazing movements that's going on right now, yeah. like the Black Lives Matter movement or all of the the protests and mm-hmm. stuff that are going on, because there are so many, uh, there are so good many people right and good causes support. that yeah. that need your help. So honestly, if you have the at this point the money to give a little bit to us, then instead of giving it to us, give it mm. yeah. to to one of those causes. Yeah, because that's more important than yeah than us making a few bucks. So. I mean, it would be to get like a better co-host so I can pay them to, you know, that's the goal. But I need money for that. <laughs> a better co-host? Yeah, like a also trained co-host. professional. Also co-host. Yeah, you're my co-host. I am not your co-host. I'm your co-host and you're my co-host. <laughs> yeah, we are co-hosts. I'm lead anchor Ron Burgundy. Yeah, no, we are both. <laughs> what is it in Scrubs? Scotch, scotch, scotch. Here it goes down. <laughs> down into my belly. Mm-mm-mm. No, what is this in Scrubs? He's the the get there, superintendent and ah uh, no, I don't remember. Superintendent, that's in a school. No, the the uh, the title Elliot gets it and 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 Oh yeah. And Elliot gets paid a little more mm. then and he is just like the Chief resident. Chief resident mm, and, and co-chief resident. Co-chief resident. <laughs> he teaches. And he's like, we get paid the same money. Oh yeah, that's right. We should change that. She gets buck. Uh, she gets ten bucks more a month. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Yeah. He clues it on in front of his the janitor clues on the <laughs> co co host and he can't get it off. <laughs> that's also a great podcast. Uh, shout out to uh, fake uh, doctors, real friends, or real friends, fake doctors. No, fake doctors, real friends. Yeah, great, great, great podcast. If with you Zach like Raff Scrubs, and yeah. If just you like check Scrubs, it out. they basically just banter and go over like the, so each funny. episode is an episode of the show and they just talk about it yeah. and talk about their experience they have, it's, it's just witty a banter really great 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 um, it's really good podcast so yeah that's it that's it bye bye, bye.